Performance Testing for Beginners Part 6 Here is the list of important aspects to watch for whenever our tests are being executed. From the software performance side, we need to look at the application code. In case if you are not a developer, we can speak to the relevant stakeholders and have the latest code deployed into our testing environment. Secondly, we need to look at the configuration of servers and operating systems. From the hardware performance perspective, we need to look at CPU, memory, disk utilization, and network statistics. What are the performance counters and why are they important? Performance counters actually help you track down the performance of the application. For client-side metrics, we would be looking at the response time, hits per second. The hits per second graph shows the number of hits on the web server on the Y axis as a function of the elapsed time in the scenario on the X axis. Hits per second graph can be compared to the transaction response time graph to see how the number of hits affect transactions performance. Throughput Pass-fail statistics It gives the measure of application capability to function correctly under load. It is measured by measuring transactions pass-fail and error rates. For server-side metrics, we would be looking at for CPU, percentage of user time, percentage processor time, run queue length. For memory, we will be looking at available and committed bytes. For network, we would be looking at bytes sent per second and bytes received per second. For disk, we would be looking at read bytes per second and write bytes per second. What is Workload Modeling? As per the definition, Workload Model is the mix or combination of requests placed on the application under test at a given point of time. It is the stimulus to the system. Designing Workload Model is a critical and mandatory activity before we perform any load or stress testing. It helps us to study the behavior of the system under various identified workload models. A request may include things such as authenticating a user, performing calculations, retrieving data from the databases, transforming the data, or sending documents over HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Importance of Workload Modeling Workload may be no load, minimal, normal, above normal or extreme load conditions. Extreme loads are used in load or stress testing. This is done to find out the breaking point of the application and to identify the bottlenecks. Minimum loads are usually used in benchmark testing in order to estimate the user experience. Normal loads are used in performance testings in general. This is done to ensure acceptable level of performance characteristics like response time or request processing time under the estimated load. Workload is identified for each of the scenarios. It can be identified based on the following parameters. Number of users The total number of concurrent and simultaneous users who can access the application in a given time frame. A rate of request The request received from the concurrent load of users per unit time. Pattern of the request A given load of concurrent users may be performing different tasks using the application. Patterns of request identify the average load of users and the rate of request for a given functionality of an application. 
workload models. Now let us see each of the workload models in detail. Steady state workload model. It is the simplest workload model used in load testing. A constant number of virtual users are run against the application for the duration of the test. Below is the diagram showing the basic steady state workload model. Increasing workload model. It helps testers to find the limit of the web application's work capacity. At the beginning of the load test, only a small number of virtual users are run. Virtual users are then added to the workload step by step at regular intervals of time. Below is the diagram showing the basic increased workload model. In steady state dynamic workload model, you can change the number of virtual users in the test while it is being run. And in this workload model, no simulation time is fixed. Below is the diagram showing the basic dynamic workload model that we use in performance testing. What is workload profile? A workload profile consists of an aggregate mix of users performing various operations. Workload profile can be designed by performing following activities. Identify the distribution or ratio of work. For each key scenario, identify the distribution ratio of work. The distribution is based on the number of users executing each scenario. Identify the peak user load. Identify the maximum expected number of concurrent users of the web application. Using the work distribution of for each scenario, calculate the percentage of users. Identify the user load under a variety of condition of interest. For instance, you might want to identify the normal user load and the peak user load of the application. Consider a sample web application where the distribution of load for various profiles could be similar to that shown in the below table. We have identified three different scenarios for performance testing. Some of the users would be browsing the application. Some of them would be searching for a product and the remaining users would be buying the product. And the total number of users that we have identified for this test is 200. And the test would be designed to run for 2 hours. There is a random think time between 1 to 10 seconds is given in the test script for after each operation. What business flows to include in performance testing? Decide on the business flows that needs to be included in our testing. Once we have the list of scenarios that we wanted to include, we will schedule a call with the stakeholders to get their approval. If they feel anything needs to be modified, we can change it until they agree on the list. Once we get the go ahead, we then add the list to the test approach and send that to the client or stakeholders for their approvals. Decide on the mix of business flows in the test run. Similarly, if we have any specific script that needs to be run in isolation, we need to get an agreement from the client here. For example, if they prefer testing only the new functionality that they added as part of this new release. Decide on the order of test scripts that needs to be started. This happens at extreme rare cases wherein we need to execute one set of test script first so that the generated data can be used in the next set of scripts. For example, if you have two scenarios like purchasing a product and cancelling that product order. So, we have to run the purchasing order script first and then use the purchasing order number in the second script to cancel that order. Decide on the ramp up for each business flow and test duration. If we want, we can combine all the scenarios and have a generalized ramp up and ramp down. Or else, we can have a different workload model for each scenario. 
This entirely depends on the business requirement. As you could see on the screen, it shows the graphical representation of performance engagement process. New project query, response over requirement questionnaire, signing the contract, approving the test plan, providing application demo, providing written approval on business flow document, and providing the feedback on the closure report were the tasks of the project team sending the requirement questionnaire, preparation of the test plan, business flow document creation, creating project plan, creating test execution and reporting results are the tasks of the performance testing team. I suggest to pause the screen for a minute or two and see what are the deliverables that are expected from the performance testing team and what are the activities that needs to be performed by the project team. Performance test process is divided into many phases. Namely, initiation phase, planning phase, designing phase, execution phase and reporting phase. As you could see on the screen, the activities and deliverables highlighted in orange color in each of the phase are to be taken care by the project team. The activities and deliverables mentioned in blue color are the responsibilities of the performance testing team. I suggest to pause the video for a minute or two to understand each of the team's deliverables and their roles. While gathering the performance testing requirements, we need to take special care about the test objective. It forms the basis of deciding what type of performance test needs to be done. The test plan and test report should reflect this objective. Performance requirements. It shows the expected performance levels of the application under test. Performance absolute requirements. It includes criteria for contractual obligation, service level agreement or fixed business needs. Performance basic goals and objectives include criteria desired in the application but variance in these can be tolerated under certain circumstances. Resource constraint. This is to ensure if we will be given the testing environment dedicatedly for carrying out our performance testing activities or do we need to share the environment with any other teams. How to gather the performance testing requirements Whenever the company receives a request for performance testing an application, the company sends their own standard template of requirement gathering questionnaire to the project manager or the client to understand more about the application that they are going to test. 